Hello everyone, it's me, Beloved Dia. Today I'm going to be telling some stories because the video we had planned last week didn't really all work out all that well. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. We're on the road to 300 subs, so please subscribe. Now, with that out of the way, let's get on to the video. First story is about my cat Tigger. He is a tabby cat and he is a year old. He's about to be two this year. When we first found Tigger, it was August 14th, 2020. And our state was having a dry spell where there was no water or very little water for days, I should say. And it was hot outside. And where we live, we have a lot of stray cats running around, especially some males around. And when my mom brought him in, we were lucky that he was still alive. Because he had been with his mother, mother, and he was about eight weeks old at this time. So, when we first brought him in, my mom w looked at my dad and was like, please don't be mad at me. Because <laughs> my dad has this rule, or not really this rule, but kind of this thing where he was like, no more pets. <laughs> no more pets. But once we found him, we knew after a few weeks that we were going to keep him. So, since he was only so little, he could only fit in the palm of my hand. He was so small, but he was dehydrated, and he was just so nervous. When my mom brought him in, he, she said that she was curled up by a little bench that we had outside and stuck between our house and the stool. And my mom had to do a double glance, and she was like, what is that little thing down there? What's that little thing down there? And then Tigger looked over and was just like, oh my lord, that's a cat. That's a cat. So she picked him up and like kind of held him on his back and was just like starting to rub him like up and down, like pet him and calm him down. And once my mom brought him inside, I took care of him for like the first two weeks. I took care of him for two weeks. He was in my room for two weeks because Missy, our other cat, did not like him at the time. And we didn't know what gender he was either. So that was an adventure for us as well. So his original name, before we found out the gender, was going to be Isabel instead of Tigger. We suggested Isabel because my friend uh, was having a hard time and we thought it would be a good idea to uh, kind of name Tigger in their honor. So we went to the vet and we found out that Tigger was indeed a ma it was indeed a male, and um, we're like, well, can't be Isabel. So my dad had suggested the name Tigger if it was a male, and turns out Tigger was indeed a male, and that's how Tigger had gotten his name. He's a little goofball with so with such high energy. He keeps me up some nights, but we all love him little goofball. He's a little goofball. We love him. So the second story is a story of how we adopted Missy, my other cat. Missy is a black cat and she is blind in her left eye. She is blind in her left eye and this story takes place, I was in about the third grade at this time, and we got her in 2016. December 3rd, 2016 is when we adopted her. Her full name is Mistletoe, but we usually save that for around the holidays. So, at this time, I had really wanted a cat. I was just so lonely after we had lost our dogs, our last dog. We had three and then we had to put the last one down, sadly. So I was just 
wanting to have another animal in the house. And I'm like, let's get a cat. <laughs> and in my dreams, I was a big Stampy fan when I was little. So I wanted a ginger cat to name it Stampy. <laughs> so I had drawn pictures of like me and like a little ginger cat so he can name it Stampy. And when the day finally came, it was December 3rd, and it was supposed to be a surprise, but my dad ruined that for me because he had said, you know, if you get a male cat, make sure it doesn't pee behind the couch. So I was like, why would you bring this up now, may I ask? <laughs> and then my mom came and was like, come on, we're getting, uh, come on, we're getting in the car. We're, let's go up to the animal shelter. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> So we went up to the animal shelter, and uh, an my animal shelter, my local animal shelter, did a thing called 12 Cats of Christmas, where the cats would be marked at lower prices, so, like, for the holidays. And we were looking at the 12 Cats of Christmas to see which one uh, we wanted. And I saw this little, adorable little ginger, brown ginger, uh, male. And he was just so high energetic, and I had gotten really attached to him. But he got adopted to a lovely elderly lady, so I hope they're doing well. Anyway, we were looking in the back room uh, full of cats. They had two rooms full of cats. And we look to the very last shelf on the right-hand side, and we see a crate that had a 12 cats Christmas mark, and it was named Robin. That was Missy. And we asked if we could, like, you know, hold the cat, and uh, we were allowed to, and I just held Missy in my hand for so long, and she just sat there so lovingly in my arms, and to this day, that's one of the sweetest moments I've ever had with her is when, the f moment we first met. That's one of the sweetest moments we've ever had, and I loved, I loved her and loved her that, that day. She is so sweet, I can't even. <laughs> she's one of the sweetest cats ever. She can be chaotic at times, but she's still very sweet. Anyway, it got time to cut it got time to check out and my mom was like, Yes, we're getting this cat. We are getting this cat. So I went off into the back rooms to like do some crafts, because I was like six, seven at the time. Six, seven, eight at the time. They had the kids do crafts while they're waiting for their parents or grandparents or whoever was adopting the animal do all the paperwork. So I was in the back room and I made a little Christmas ornament and I come out and my mom is hugging a woman to death just like oh my god thank you thank you thank you and turns out the cat Missy wasn't on the 12 cats Christmas list even though she had uh, a little tree mark on it. Uh, I think it was because it was like a mistake that she wasn't supposed to be on there. But uh, the poor, the not the poor lady, <laughs> the sweet lady bought the cat for us so then we could take her home. And if by any chance she's watching this, which I don't think she is, but if you are watching this, thank you. You mean the world does. And I remember getting in the car with Missy and the, and the little toys that she had inside and going home so happy. And on the car ride home, we are like, we're not keeping this cat's name as Robin. There's no way we're keeping this cat's name as Robin. And I thought, since it's around the holidays, we should name her Mistletoe. And we should just call her Missy for short. And that has been, yeah, that's been the story of Missy. Now this next story uh, is about some of my personal experiences with 
uh, with ghosts. Now, I don't know your uh, belief in the supernatural. I don't know if you're a believer or non-believer or whatever. I just think it'll be interesting to tell my personal stories. If you have any stories, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will read them. And if you suggest or if you tell me otherwise, I can put them in a video. Tigger. Tigger. Way to go, you lost it. Way to go, you lost the clip, bub. You're not getting it back. You lost it. You're not getting it back, bub. <laughs> Hi. That's Tigger. Bye, Bob. So, if you have any stories that you would like to be shared, or, or not, you can tell me. I can put them in a video with your consent, of course. So anyway, I'll probably do two of these stories, and then I'll move on to the final story. So, this was late at night, and it was about three in the morning, I would say. And my bed, it was, at the time, was currently where I am filming, in the corner of my room. And I woke up at about three, I don't know for what reason, but I wake up and I look to the, corner, the other corner of my room, and I see a woman in white. It was fully white, but I could still make out details. Like, I could make out vague facial features and uh, very vague, like, I could tell that she was wearing a, like, white nightgown. It wasn't like a modern nightgown, but more of like a back-in-the-day type, uh, type nightgown. <laughs> anyway. So, I just look, and I'm just like, am I, am I dreaming? What, is this a ghost in my house? What, what is going on? So, I look, I just stare at her. I remember just staring at her. Just, and she was just sitting there swaying gently, back and forth. That was all she was doing. So, as kids do, they usually would tell their parents or do something to indicate that they're freaked out. But what did I do? Oh boy, I rolled over and went back to sleep. I was not dealing with that at 3 in the morning. I was not dealing with that at 3 in the morning. And then I wake up, obviously, and she was gone. I haven't seen her since. I have not seen her since. But, honestly, sometimes it feels like like, uh, you know, I wish I would be visited by that again. To kind of like, you know, get another chance, you know. My second paranormal story happened about a few months, or I don't really know exactly what happened. I think it was about a month or a month and a half later. I, uh, it was 5 a.m. in the, it was 5 a.m. And I remember waking up for, again, whatever reason. I think it might have been a nightmare. And I wake up and I look over to my nightstand and I see a woman in white, but not like the last, not like the last time. It was a woman in white, but she had dark black, or dark black hair. And she was standing quite a bit away from me, but she was like kind of leaning in, just like staring at me. I can't exactly remember what color the eyes were. I just know the eyes were bright, were bright in color. And but what was weird about this is that every time I, every time I blinked, she would get closer to me, and that was what creeped me out the most. Because things aren't supposed to get 
near you without consent. Back off. <laughs> so, again, what would a normal person do? They would freak out or indicate that they were scared and that this was not supposed to be here. But what did I do? First, I tried to have a staring contest with her. Second, I rolled back over and went back to bed. I, sh I should have been more scared for me being as young as I was. But I didn't. So, that one was an interesting one. I still haven't figured that out to this day. But, still pretty interesting. This last story happened a bit more recently, about late February, early March, I would say it was. But this happened at my school in gym class, my first period of gym class. And we had been bad during the announcements because you can't, you couldn't hear the announcements at all. So, uh, my gym teacher made us walk around the around the gym which for some people that would be oh no uh, we can't play games oh no we have to do better but me and but me and Belle were just like yes <laughs> we don't have to run around so we were talking and then it got about to uh, the end of our walking walking period and my dog and I see another girl in our class out on her phone on like doing a Snapchat video. I don't know if the audio was clear or not, but I just make the weirdest sound I could possibly make and it was hilarious because she just looked at me with great confusion and I just ran off. I ran off walking around, around the gym with Belle following behind me. But what happened after that was also very funny as well. What happened was we were walking back around and I passed the group of girls again. And kind of like the kind of like the head honcho of the friend group or like the more popular one I guess. I, I guess that's how you would say it. Uh, walks up to me and was like, hey I really like your sweater. And I'm like, oh yeah, thanks. She, do you, and then she goes, do you know how I would say that in my native language? And I paused for a second like, where is she going with this? And I, and she just kind of made like a deep monotone barking at me. And I like jumped back for a second so like, oh my god, I didn't know she was going to do that. Then I just quickly laughed it off and it's like, yes, another one has joined us. Another one has joined us with the weird noises. <laughs> and then that happened on for the rest of class because I just see them, I just see the lead, the leader of the friend group just go around and start barking at people. I just see her start barking at people and I'm like, this shouldn't be as funny as it is, but it really is, it really is funny. And to this day, it's still one of my favorite moments I've had at school. So, that was the last story for today. If you have any stories that you would like me to read out, please let me know in the comments down below in this video. Remember, please like and subscribe. We're on the road to 300 subscribers, and it would really make my day. So, bye! Bye-bye!